Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. My goodness. That is dynamite. I gotta get one more of those. Yes! Four hour short rib time. That's it. <laughs> Short ribs are, or I call them brisket on a stick, right? Uh, I'm gonna show you my method today to getting short ribs done in four hours. It's a combination of dry smoke method and then we're gonna make this really cool, uh, almost shallow braising liquid with like soy sauce and mustard and Worcestershire, so, uh, and beef stock, some really fun stuff. But we're gonna use the Kettle Joe today. So I've started the fire, let's jump in and take a look. So this is kind of a hybrid between your ceramic style grill and your kettle style grill. Uh, but notice the six ceramic pieces that make up the firebox. That's going to allow us to retain a lot of heat and cook low and slow for a very long period of time. I like to start with minimum charcoal, but maximum heat so that we can get great smoke. Then we're going to put this piece of meat on and damper down the oxygen flow which is gonna drop our temperature. So, without further ado, we're gonna bury these big chunks of cherry right in the hottest portion of our coals so we can get that good smoke. As soon as I see that combustion occur and that smoke clear up, we're gonna go on with our plate, making this a pretty much essentially an oven, right? A really easy kettle style indirect cook. And there we go right there. Watch, it's real billowy and smoky. Magic is about to happen as soon as you see it come to life. All this is going to clean up. And that's what I want to see. Let's go ahead and put the deflector on. Now our grill grates conveniently go on both sides of these little knobs here. And we're gonna let this smoke clean up a little bit while we check out the short rib. Uh, a little housekeeping on this. I've got some bits and pieces here that are just gonna burn up. So I'll trim off anything hanging off like that. We've got a decision to make. Do we wanna take off this membrane? Um, I say yes. You know, look at it. There's not a lot of meat on the bottom. So we could just leave it on there if we wanted to. But I take it off so that we can get some more smoke and seasoning flavor throughout the cook. So just take your knife, peel up a little corner. And then we're going to try to take this and peel it all the way back. Easiest to do with a paper towel, just so you can not slip. And we're going to try to pull this off in one fail swoop. Oh, we're looking pretty good. And look at that. That just never happens on camera where it comes off almost in one full piece. Very nice. And as soon as I say it, look at that, we get hung up on the end. Uh, but pretty simple stuff right there. You know, often in cooking, it's the little things that make the big difference. So by, by making this easier to eat and by getting that little bit of seasoning and smoke in there through the bottom could make all the difference, okay? Uh, little, little things like that go a long way. Got a little rain coming in here today, so fun cooking outside and in a bit of foul weather, I love it. Um, we could afford to take off some of this fat cap because notice all the marbling inside. And also notice that it wedges a little bit. It's a little thinner here than it is here. So that would lead me to leave this bit of fat on here, but to attack it just a touch here. So just some light trimming. And as we take this fat cap off, we're gonna expose a little silver skin that we'll wanna slide our knife under and just gently take off the top. Beautiful meat here. I love short ribs. I'm a huge short beef, beef shorty fan. If you're learning to do, if you wanna do brisket but you've never done it before, I say nail short ribs three times and then go for brisket. All right, big chunk of fat there. We can cut that out just a touch. And then last but not least, just this bit here. And we could continue to attack this if we wanted to, but I like what I am seeing, okay? Uh, let's talk about seasoning. So I've got a combination of two different seasonings today. I'm gonna start with a little Lane's Barbecue Cubano. 
Uh, it's got some salt, it's got some pepper, uh, garlic, a little bit of lime. Um, so really, really fun, even some uh, oregano. Let's use this for our top layer. Next, we're gonna go with a little Qunami. Okay, there's a little sweetness to this, a little turbinado sugar, which is gonna help build that bark that we love for short ribs. Now, this layering technique is used by the top pit masters in the world, uh, and it's just a great way to distribute a unique flavor profile. The salty layer we put down first is gonna help with osmosis and start wicking moisture out. Whew, there's that smoke. And then, we're, and then nature's gonna wanna find balance so that semi-permeable membrane is gonna start sucking water back in. So by putting something salty on first and then something sweet on second, we're actually flavor brining the top layer of that meat. Pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna put our short ribs right on the center of this grill, bone side down. And this is gonna be a two hour smoke at 300 degrees. Just like when we're using a ceramic grill, when we're approaching the target temperature, that's when we wanna start dampering down the oxygen flow. By dampering down the oxygen, we're able to approach the temperature that we're gonna stall at versus chasing it, going over, and then trying to drop it. So when we're trying to hit that 300 like we are, at 250, let's start tapering down the draft door and the control tower so that we can maintain that 300. It's been two hours, let's take a look. Oh yeah, nice bit of rendering occurring, good bark build up. I see the marrow coming out. So we've had two hours on the grill at a dry smoke. Now it's time to flip it into a liquid bath. We're gonna cover it up and put it on for the rest of the two hours to break down in this flavorful liquid. So before we do that, we gotta mix up the ingredients to make our flavorful liquid. So let's start out with two cups of beef stock. Next, we're gonna go in with half a cup of soy sauce. Uh, I want a little acid, so I'm gonna go in with some mustard. Roughly two tablespoons there. And don't forget, this recipe is located down below, so don't worry about writing all this down. Now for a little bit of sweetness, we're gonna go in with brown sugar. And that's gonna give us that molasses-y kind of flavor as well. Worcestershire, one tablespoon. Worcestershire brings out the barbecue in anything. And then we've got two tablespoons of butter, which will knock in and it'll slowly melt. But this is a great liquid to finish our short rib off. So let's transfer our short rib and we're gonna go meat side down at this point. And look how, because we took that membrane away, you're already starting to see the bone reveal. That's beautiful stuff. Go in with our liquid. Don't forget that knob of butter. And then top with the foil. Back on the 300 degree Kettle Joe for another two hours. And we're not going, we're not really gunning for an internal temperature here. We just want probe tender. So when we're using our thermometer, we're using it as a probe and we want it to feel as if we were sticking it into soft butter. So uh, two hours, we'll give it a look. We're at the two hour mark wrapped, which puts us at four hours in total on these short ribs. So now it's time to raise the lid and make sure that we are probe tender. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts about a low and slow cook. Uh, it's like Christmas come early. We're unwrapping. Again, we're not gunning for an internal temperature. Do we just want to, oh yeah. We just want to see it sink right through just like that. So these are done. Uh, let me give you an idea of where that internal temperature is just because we're at that 205 mark. Absolutely stunning. So let's go ahead and pull these off and look at all that rendered juice in there. So we've got some fat content. We've got all that braising liquid. Not even really braising liquid, right? Just liquid that it was in. We're gonna have to be careful these babies don't fall apart. Oh yeah. Did you see that? I accidentally nicked this bit right here. Look at that smoke ring in there. So now we gotta let it rest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave these to rest for about five to six minutes. We're gonna slide the bones off of them. And remember, I jokingly call this brisket on a stick. We're gonna slice it just like a brisket. Five minutes. Five minute resting period is done on these four hour short ribs. Let's take a look. And notice the bones as you'd expect. 
just slide right out. A little bit of that middle meat, that'll be a bite for me. Beautiful. So now we're all, now all that we're left with is this beautiful cap meat. And I'm gonna use a slicer here. Start on this side. I'm gonna put a little positive pressure to try to hold it together a little bit. And we're gonna go pencil thick slices. Oh yeah. Look at that. Sometimes in this fast paced world, we just gotta slow things down a little bit. I know four hour short ribs is fast for short ribs, um, but cooking low and slow often gives us just an incredible mouthfeel that otherwise we can't get. You know, the low and slow game on these Kamado style grills, even this Kettle Joe is just outstanding. Um, that is a bite that I would share with any of my family, friends, and certainly everybody watching today. Look at that. Do that one more time for you. Just effortless. I mean, I'm, still, I'm building up the anticipation in my mind right now. Uh, I'm getting the meat sweats thinking about this. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. My goodness. That is dynamite. I gotta get one more of those. Team, if you enjoyed these short ribs as much as I just enjoyed that bite, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss a thing. Throw us a thumbs up and please leave a comment. I love reading that comment section. From our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling.